On today's episode, a new nuclear rocket revealed by NASA, intuitive machines prepare for moon landing take two, and India makes a daring plan for their next lunar mission. Mars has revealed their latest nuclear-powered rocket design with a claim that the vehicle can transport astronauts from the Earth to Mars in just two months. It's a bold idea packaged together with a bold new propulsion system. This new spaceship design comes courtesy of American aerospace company Howe Industries, and it's called the Pulsed Plasma Rocket, or PPR. The idea here being that this is specifically engineered to provide shielded, fast transit for humans to reach Mars, meaning that they are trying to eliminate the problem of radiation exposure from the interplanetary transit. Now, this new propulsion system is pretty weird, so it's not exactly easy to figure out how this thing works, and the fact that How Industries is still using a website design and render quality from the year 2010 is not helping. But this is essentially a very high-tech, modern take on the old nuclear pulse propulsion that was developed by NASA back in the 50s and 60s for Project Orion, and this is a very simple concept. You basically just throw tiny nuclear bombs out the back of your spaceship that explode as they leave, and the force from those explosions propels the ship forward. It sounds insane, but it does actually work. This modern take is called Pulsed Fission Fusion, or PUF. That's one of the better space acronyms out there, and that's what you're seeing in the render. The PUFFs are nuclear reactions. Now, if you'll allow me to oversimplify things because this is very high-level stuff, a bullet of radioactive material, uranium or deuterium, is fired down the barrel of the rocket using an electromagnetic launcher. As the bullet travels through the barrel, it's shot at by a series of pulsed lasers that inject millions of millions of neutrons into the radioactive material, which will gradually superheat the bullet to an incredibly high temperature that will trigger a nuclear fission reaction in the uranium that's splitting the atom. The fission energy will then trigger a nuclear fusion reaction in the deuterium and the tritium, like a cascading release of energy that will instantly generate a massive expansion of supercharged particles, also known as plasma, and then that cone at the end of the rocket is a magnetic nozzle that will repel all of the charged particles out of the back and push the ship forward. The nozzle also captures energy from the nuclear reaction to power the next pulse. Now, the point of all this is to achieve both high levels of thrust and high efficiency at the same time, which is typically not possible with a conventional rocket engine. You could have a chemical engine like a SpaceX Raptor, massive amounts of thrust, but it will burn through hundreds of tons of fuel in a matter of seconds. Or you could have an electric engine like a Hall Effect Thruster. These are so efficient that they can run forever on a few pounds of xenon gas, but it takes them years to accelerate to full speed. So the pulsed plasma rocket is said to deliver 100,000 newtons of thrust, which is over 22,000 pounds, which is a lot when you're only pushing through the vacuum of space with a specific impulse of 5,000 seconds. That's a measurement of efficiency. Our familiar engine, the SpaceX Raptor, has just about 330 seconds of specific impulse, so 5,000 is a lot. The benefit here is that we can now travel to Mars a lot faster, taking a trip time down from 8 months to just 2 months. We also can afford to add a lot more weight to our vehicle, specifically a lot more radiation shielding to the crew compartment than what would be possible in a conventional rocket like the Starship. We could have a thicker layer of water between the crew and the solar wind outside, water being an excellent radiation insulator. The PPR concept is now moving into phase two of NASA's innovative advanced concept study, where the developers will build upon the assessments from phase one to optimize the engine design, perform proof of concept experiments, and design a spacecraft concept to better protect crewed flights to Mars. You might remember intuitive machines from their attempted moon landing earlier this year. Their very tall and very skinny Odysseus lander hit the surface a little too hard and ended up tipped over. Despite the setback, they're gearing up for another attempt with a new version of their Nova C lunar lander. Set to launch by the end of 2024, the upcoming IM-2 mission builds on the hard lessons learned from IM-1. This time, intuitive machines are determined to make a successful landing. So, what improvements can we expect from the IM-2 lander? Let's dive into the key upgrades. First, enhanced precision is a major highlight. 
This new version incorporates advancements in both software and hardware, achieving 20 times better landing precision compared to the IM-1 mission. Next, intuitive machines have significantly improved the communications and tracking systems. Based on feedback from the IM-1 mission, they've upgraded these critical areas to ensure more reliable performance. Another key upgrade is the antenna configuration. The team has reconfigured the antennas to enhance bandwidth and ensure continuous communication. Lastly, they are implementing more rigorous testing and verification processes to address potential landing issues, aiming for a smoother mission. These upgrades reflect Intuitive Machine's effort to refine and optimize its lunar landing capabilities, giving future lunar missions a better chance of success. The IM-2 mission aims to land near the lunar south pole, close to Shackleton Crater. This location was strategically chosen for the Polar Resources Ice Mining Experiment 1, the first demonstration of in-situ resource utilization on the moon, which focuses on sampling and analyzing ice from below the lunar surface. Understanding more about subsurface lunar ice is vital for sustaining future missions. Water found on the moon can be used for drinking, generating oxygen, and producing fuel, significantly reducing the need to transport these essential resources from Earth. Now let's talk about the exciting payloads that the IM-2 mission will carry to the moon. First up is the Prime-1 that we mentioned before. This experiment includes the Trident Ice Drill and the M-Solo Mass Spectrometer, which will work together to measure the amount of ice in lunar samples. Next, we have the International Lunar Observatory, or ILO-1. This is a flight-ready optical payload, specifically ruggedized for the harsh environment of the Moon's South Pole. The ILO-1 mission aims to establish a permanent astronomical observatory on the lunar surface to advance lunar and deep space exploration and research. Then there's the Micro Nova Hopper. This standalone hopping lander will explore difficult-to-reach areas on the lunar surface, providing valuable data. We'll also have the Minipix TPX-3 space payload. This instrument monitors the radiation field on the moon, helping to protect both crew and equipment. Finally, Intuitive Machines is collaborating with Nokia Bell Labs and NASA to demonstrate 4G connectivity on the lunar surface with a 4G cellular network demonstration. Intuitive Machines is part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services program, a key element of the Artemis program. CLIPS speeds up lunar research and technology development by providing rapid, affordable access to the lunar surface for scientific and technological experiments. This is crucial for preparing for long-term human exploration and establishing a sustainable presence on the moon. India is taking a giant leap forward with the Chandrayaan-4 mission. Following the success of Chandrayaan-3, which made India the fourth country to land on the moon in July 2023, the Indian Space Research Organization, or ISRO, is now planning a moon sample return mission. This mission marks a significant step forward, as ISRO recently announced. It will start relying on private companies, showcasing the boldness and forward-thinking approach in their space exploration efforts. The Chandrayaan-4 mission aims to collect lunar samples from the Shiv Shakti point, the same landing site as Chandrayaan-3. Nilesh Desai, director of the Space Applications Center, revealed that this mission will involve multiple launches and spacecraft. The complexity of a sample return mission cannot be overstated. It requires two launch vehicles to send at least five modules, including a transfer module, a re-entry module, a lander, a propulsion module, and an ascender, all working in perfect coordination. Once on the lunar surface, a robotic arm will collect samples and transfer them to the ascender module, which will then dock with the transfer module in lunar orbit. The samples will eventually make their way back to Earth. This mission highlights the difficulty and precision required for a successful sample return, making it a significant technological milestone. The benefits of a moon sample return mission are immense. Scientifically, it provides valuable insights into the moon's geological history, composition, and potential resources. Technologically, it pushes the boundaries of what's possible, developing and testing advanced technologies crucial for future space missions. Discovering new materials like water, ice, or rare minerals can have implications for future lunar missions and even Earth-based industries. More importantly, these missions foster international collaboration and inspire future generations. They remind us of humanity's curiosity and ambition to explore the unknown, driving educational and inspirational impact globally. Prime Minister Modi has set a target for Indian astronauts to walk on the moon by 2040, and ISRO chairman Sridhara Somanath has outlined a roadmap envisioning a lunar base around 2047. 
These ambitious plans showcase India's growing capabilities and aspirations in lunar exploration. And that's not all. India is also planning its next big step in Mars exploration. Following their successful Mars Orbiter mission in 2013, which made India the first Asian nation to put a spacecraft in Mars orbit, ISRO is now working on a Mars lander mission. This mission will include a range of scientific instruments, from ground-penetrating radar to biosignature-seeking spectrometers. The challenges are immense, from a nine-month journey to the Red Planet to deploying a lander using a sky crane system. So, what does this all mean? India is not just aiming to explore space, but to become a major player in the global space industry. By involving the private sector and collaborating with international partners, they are pushing the boundaries of what's possible.